If I could ask anything right now, it'd be like, where do I start planning and how do I plan properly? I'm a massive advocate for the test model. It just gives you a broader visual of like what your army is actually going to look like. The biggest difference between me and you is that I started planning for the game. What's going to give you the, the functionality to get it done to where you want it to as quickly as possible? The key is enjoying painting it, yeah. This is this is brilliant. Uh, so we would have added, we got, I guess a showcase going up next week at some point. Yeah. That you were filming. Uh-huh. Um, when James came down, you you were taking a little while. I don't know how many you, you recorded, but like he come down and he was like, oh, I couldn't get my words out. And he hit us with a classic James-ism that I've never heard okay. before. I'm, re I'm ready for it. He said, it was, he was like, oh, my lips are like confetti. What does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> I was, tr mean? I was trying, I don't to get, know. trying to get my words out and it was just still coming out in... In just yeah, that's right. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know. I actually don't know. In what I don't know. I don't the know. funniest thing was when he was doing it, it. When he said it, he like paused a little bit because he had to think about what it was. Yeah, so was he trying, couldn't get his words to, out yeah. while he was saying. I was it, literally so. the whole the whole analogy was in itself an example. Yeah, of it was the like thing, my, yeah. my lips are like confetti. <laughs> yeah. So right. there you go. There's a new one for you. Yeah. yeah. I'll okay. Kick things off. Well, well on that note, we're back. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, it's not been any time for anyone else, but for us, it's been a minute. Yeah. We pre-recorded a load, didn't we? Or well, you say a load, it was like two, but sort yeah, of. Something like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so, well, it was weird, wasn't it? it was we, three, really, we did wasn't two it? lots of pre recording, so it, it wasn't like as if we would just batched loads of them, was it? So, no, yeah, uh, yeah, get what do you call it? The pod rust, that's what, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Feels a bit weird, yeah. Although, yeah. I feel like it actually it's probably not as long as we thought. How long were you away for? Uh, like 10 days, yeah. yeah, so it's not actually that long. No, no it feels longer, I suppose, maybe. Yeah. I don't know, we've got no excuse, basically, is what I'm saying. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, what's everyone been up to hobby-wise for the last last little bit? I've actually painted stuff. You painted stuff, yeah. Not just a thing. You've painted multiple things. Well, it's it's multiple models within one thing. They're not finished, but okay. I've, I've been working. That's a start because normally it's nothing. So yeah. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Just carried on with that. I think we touched on it on the pre-recorded episodes, but I'd only just started the Null Spirit Pack. Um, oh, the war band. Un Underworlds, what yeah, yeah, so yeah, I've kind of yeah. carried on with that. Um, is that finished? Can I pull a crook shaper here and put it on the screen? Or is I'm it very tempted I, to I, say I am, <laughs> I am going to touch upon the. Uh, we'll, get there, we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get I'm very tempted to say it's finished, just so that you can then put a thing up saying that I didn't did not indeed finish it. But and for um, the audience, oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not finished, but it's it's uh, it's getting there. One of the things I found with them is like. They're all so unique, even with the things that they share. When you look at the box art, they're all different colors. Am stuff. I the only one finding that with just Warhammer in general these days? Yeah, like, even really, just normal units, like been, basically characters now. It's been really difficult to like batch paint them because mm. so there's four of them. All the two of them share skin tones. Yeah, and then the other two are individual skin tones. Mm -hmm. So it's three different skin tones straight away. They're all covered in like bones and cloth and little trinkets and things. And all of them have, there's no like. But that, that's, that's kind of what those, those war bands are. are yeah, like it's those, I, those I love the models. Don't get no, me no, wrong. I'm, but I'm it's like that. so hard to work out how to batch paint them because there's no, we always talk about working in majority color and then going down and down. And it's like, well, on one, one of them might not even have this color. And yeah. the other one, it's the, the yeah. most prominent color. Yeah. You kind of have to do a higgle. He would. Can't say the words. <laughs> his words are like his, confetti. His, his, like lips, his, lips, his lips are like confetti. <laughs> Higgledy piggledy batch painting. Yeah. It, it, so I've basically did oh, HP B P. <laughs> <laughs> um, I basically did all the skin tones and and base coated all the bone stuff, and then from there I've had to sort of just individually start base coating, like fully base coated model kind of thing, and then start shading because it's just. Yeah, I've not got a good, we, not a good project to sort of try and get me back in the swing of things. Can, can we just wind really. something back for a second? Because you you were like, oh yeah, like you know, I don't know what it is in models now. I think you no, know, they, they're so much more detailed. You're painting intercessors. You can't use that excuse. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Painting I'm painting stone guard <laughs> veterans. If you're oh, going to come at me, I'm sorry. They've got a few little bits extra. Sorry, no. you yeah. Can't, you yeah, can't yeah, George is like, yeah, I know how you feel. Yeah. I'm painting, trying to get through <laughs> this one squad of stone guard. Yeah. yeah, no, more what I was getting at with that was like the amount of detail on models, not not necessarily 
as much as them being different from each other within a squad. But my point was, you said about how they're much like extra detail and loads mm. of trinkets and stuff on them. What I was saying was models in general now feel like they have like a character level detail, for like a basic dude. Yeah, that's definitely definitely the case. I'm not saying that's a bad thing necessarily. That is how you get cool with models, isn't it? I suppose. But, yeah, but yeah, but I think um, that's what they're those. That's what those warbands are designed to. They lean be into like. it even more. Yeah, yeah, because like they're supposed to be all individual. Like, um, that's what they're they're supposed to be. It's yeah. fun for a game like Underworlds as well, I guess, because they are. They are characters, aren't they? Like they will, you could give them their own sort of narrative and backstory and such. I mean, yeah, they've they've that. got like the thing with Underworlds is that they've kind of got that written for them anyway. There's no real yeah. choice. Like you are obviously people paint them however they want, but um, it's all they're an individual actual thing. That's the appeal of skirmish games in general, really, isn't it? Because you've got such a few amount of models, you can make yeah. them all really unique, and, and it's just the time a, investment is reasonable. Underworlds is the best. Though. Yeah, for yeah. Underworld specifically, that the the story's already written. Like yeah. there's a lot of lore to pull from on. An individual model, hmm. which is really cool. Yeah, um, some people probably prefer to make their own, though, right? I guess. Yeah, I mean, you can. I guess. I, I just. I, I mean, in the sense of like, you, you're like, oh, Underworlds is better because it's all pre-written for you. But I'm sure there's plenty of people who like Kill Team, for example, because they can like make their own characters and give them their own. Yeah, character. yeah, yeah. I, I think for me as well, within Underworlds, because there's artwork on the cards, I feel like I don't want to paint them my own way because that would annoy me that it wouldn't match that oh yeah on the card. I suppose that make it um, confusing at a glance as well if you just want to quickly reference yeah like oh, it's if it's a like, new um, even, even the objective cards and things like that have artwork depicting the characters in certain colour scheme whatever so but yeah I've, I've really enjoyed painting them and I upgraded my wet palette oh yeah so we spoke on the wet palette episode where um I said I had like one with like a ridge in it and stuff like that. Uh -huh. And as it turns out... Gone be the trench. As it turns <laughs> out, I'd completely forgotten that I had a leftover gift card from Christmas. Please tell me it was a TK Maxx. The TK Maxx. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Home run. <laughs> yeah. um, so I went to TK Maxx and found the exact uh, ridgeless... Wonder. Uh, Tupperware. Um and I've got to say, the difference is mad. Yeah. Like, it's so much easier to maintain the, the palette. And it's just, I've got a big... The revelation space, that a flat surface for a palette is, all praise, uh, is preferable. All praise the no, it's not gods. even necessarily that, because obviously I was still using a flat surface. It was just like way smaller. Yeah. Because yeah. I was doing it in the middle. Oh, so you've gone like bigger. So now I've got size. like the full size gotcha. thing. Yeah. Can we, can we just also, like, I've noticed something in the office that you've been been little little rumblings like foreshadowing a larger a larger thing joe so so joe, <laughs> joe, joe, joe <laughs> why is it uh, little rumbling because I've, I've noticed little things so joe came into me and goes have you got um have you got the the, the 10th edition rule book i went <laughs> this was yeah that, yeah, this was like yeah i got a copy slyly like yeah like, just a few different things yeah. each day i was just like do we have any of the um any of the 10th edition rule books at all? Yeah, we've got one upstairs. I was like, okay, cool. I'm having a look through that. If Joe needs to find out about a faction for like a project like we're working on or whatever, like he would normally just jump on Lexicon or more, like look online or something. And I was like, why does he need them? What does he need a rule book for? And then like a day or two later, um, we got um got a few like uh Leviathan Marine sets upstairs that like uh, <laughs> I'm like, ask for a rule book. Asking about Marines. You might notice as well the Dark Angels Codex supplement that's been selling. Oh, I my noticed desk that. Well, I wonder what that gone. was about. A little rumbling. That, that, that was months ago. That was like two months ago. I yeah, yeah, like. but now it's gone, is what I'm saying. Right. Yeah. I've taken it home. Yeah, it's gone. Because I've been reading it. Into the shadows. So, what, what James is saying is we've noticed the breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs? You, yeah. I'd well, probably call the 10th edition <laughs> codex a breadcrumb. It's like, a loaf, more, mate. More like a, more like a bakery, isn't it? Like, like, do you right. want to just do you want to come out and say it? Is there something yeah, you want to share with the group? I am committing to painting an army. So you'll have it done before George? <laughs> I reckon I'll have it done before George because my standards are way lower than George's. <laughs> um, Dark Angels, I'm guessing. Well, it's, it's custom. Well, this is the thing. It's a whole, it's a whole thing now. The, the, you're you're me different. three months ago. Everything's, <laughs> everything's different. All the, yeah, but I'm doing it to game with it. And well, I'm hoping the gaming, that I could game in mine, hypothetically. And the gaming side of things, 12 years later, is completely... <laughs> 19th edition, I'm coming for you. It's, on that note, by the way, if you all could have seen George's realisation as he was looking at points values for the first time and realising that he has painted about 50 points worth of models so far. 
<laughs> thinking that he had like a combat patrol or something. Um, anyway, what not I, knocking me for buying all the tanks now, are you? Yeah, I'm starting <laughs> to understand some of the comments that people have been making over the last few months. The uh, the gaming side of things different. I don't want to get too much into the gaming, but the whole detachments and chapters and stuff works a lot different in temp, which yeah. I didn't realize. So I was, um, I think I'm still just kind of planning on doing a custom chapter so that I can paint other characters and things and use them as whatever. But um, I, just, I don't really know what I want it to look like though. That's so I maybe think, we should do an episode on that. If only we were doing an entire episode on planning an army project. Yeah, I mean, I could if do only. with. I could do, I've got my first thousand points list like written. Um, oh, you're like reverse engineering it then, so you're doing it literally game ready yeah, models so the, the and whole, then you're gonna yeah, go but, back but i'm writing a list of models that i want to paint it's not like oh okay. this will be a good gaming army like i'm sure the list i've written is absolutely pants that's the like, correct way to do it in my opinion but like yeah. I, I don't really mind about that build an army you know um yeah local, like yeah. i i, I want to um i just picked a load of models that i like and then see if i can fit them in and then build some others around it that i wouldn't mind painting you have done a couple of moves better than me, though, where you've worked out a rough points value because I already bought all my models. And then you reminded me that, like, oh, you can look at all the points online now because they're, the detachments, like, they don't have their own, like, war gear and stuff anymore. So, like, yeah, the points are yeah. really simple. I was like, oh, brilliant. I'll just, like, plug in my models. 350 points. <laughs> <laughs> so. Got uh, a way to go. Got yeah. a way to go. So, so, yeah, I'm doing that. And it was just, like, I kind of reconnected with some older friends recently um, going to, like, shows and stuff like going to to gigs and things bumping into them and then sort of like one of them i knew was like into into warhammer but we haven't really spoke too much about it mm. but he mentioned i was actually wearing his band's t-shirt on one of the episodes of this once yeah. and he i hadn't spoke to him in, in a while and uh he said that it like came up on his on his youtube thing and was like is it like didn't even really recognize it was me at first. I just saw someone that was wearing their t-shirt. And then, so we got talking about that. And then like another friend who I didn't even know was really into Warhammer. Um, so we, we all just kind of was chatting. We were like, should we, um, should we do something? <laughs> so yeah, we're all going to try and learn. Nice. 10th edition. We're all putting our like first proper armies together That's good. At, the, at the same time. So. That's quality that, that you're all starting at the same time as well. So you're at the same point. It's not yeah, like you've got yeah. like catch up. Yeah, there's no like pressure down your neck to like, oh, they're playing games this weekend. I want to get going. So it's like Taylor Four Moshers. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's only three of us at the minute, but yeah. Uh, well, if you need a fourth, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, they yeah, do want definitely... to do it this year. Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah oh, right. we, got, we got like. Oh, I probably... didn't realize that there was like you know an yeah. imminent time. Yeah, frame. we're we're very strict on on time, and it's uh, yeah within the calendar year if possible. Okay. Right. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna be hopefully painting an army and playing. That'd be a game of. Well, hopefully we can Warhammer. share some tips within this episode. Yeah, I, I would love to know where to start. To yeah. be honest, because I'm just so. Uh, if if I could ask anything right now, it'd be like, where do I start planning, and how do I plan properly, and things like that. So well, maybe we'll get to it at some point. <laughs> if you're a long-term listener of the podcast, you'll know how important it is to have the right tools to aid you in your painting. And if there's one piece of equipment that I could never live without, it's my Onyx lamp from Native Lighting. It doesn't matter what brush or paints you have if you can't see what you're doing in the first place. The Onyx is the perfect lamp for miniature painting because it's super bright, 2200 lumen LEDs cast soft and diffused light on your models without any harsh shadows. And its daylight balanced color temperature of 6500K gives you the confidence that the colors you are painting are accurate. As someone with a very small hobby desk, by far my favorite feature though is its articulating arm, which clamps to the side of your desk, maximizing your workspace. It's also super adjustable so you can sit comfortably in the perfect painting position without sacrifice. It also folds up into a compact shape, which is great if you like to travel to paint with your friends. To upgrade your setup and order yours now, head to siegestudios.co.uk forward slash shop or head to the link in this episode's description. Okay, finally on our little preamble, we've got a quick little announcement that we're going to be at the Miniature Painting Open on mm -hmm. the, was it the 18th and 19th of May? Yeah, it's, it's Bristol. Weekend, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. reminded me, we only have un we have un I've got under a month to finish stuff. So yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not entering anything. I'm get just one, going get to hang out, down, slap it in. see some cool models. No pressure. I'm just going to be chilling, and uh, these two are going to be like. So, do you know the funniest thing? Because obviously I went to Warhammer Fest as well. The funniest thing about going to like these painting competitions, if you haven't entered and you're with people that have entered, is like you see them going from like 
pretending to be chill <laughs> <laughs> and then once we're all looking at the models and my whole thing is just like looking at all these cool models and thinking they're amazing it, suddenly everyone's just like locks on to looking at the competition and realizing what they're up against and things like that the vibe changes very quickly well the i'm thing- not going to pretend to be chill at all uh because <laughs> i have planned to enter this for several months and I have not actually done any of the painting bit, which turns out it's quite important for a yeah. painting competition. So, so you're just going to have miniatures that are open, built on display. Yeah. Built? That's, that's ambitious. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Optimistic open for my miniatures. success. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's why I call yeah. it the open, isn't yeah, exactly, it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. No, I... I, um, I it's just an open box it, of sprues. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, you cut a little window in the box. You can see the sprue. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. it. Um, yeah. No. Uh, yeah. So under a month and uh, lots of lots of things still to paint so yes yeah. yeah i think i think i might be joining james in a paint in in a hotel painting in the hotel no no i have i have vouched that there will be no hotel painting shigan- shenanigans this time. i can't get my words out what's going his, on his lips can, are made can, of confetti can, can, literally confetti yeah. what's, what's he made, are made of confetti yeah, what can literally. you do so i will not be painting in a hotel room at all whatsoever i have firmly decided that all painting or said painting will be done before the event. So this interesting... is why I cut to the wide and then it's a no, picture of there's James. Not gonna be, there's, there will not be any any it's... glimpses of me painting in a hotel An room. interesting uh, situation now because this is the first competition we're leading up to where we have a podcast. Mm. So all of these promises <laughs> are actually being recorded for the first time ever. Previously, it was all these uh, these things that everyone would say and it, but it wouldn't really matter because it wasn't kept but now it's on it's on camera it's on audio so the elusive crude uh, flesh shaper will be making an appearance fully <laughs> painted uh, for a fact um i am going to get that done um and uh yeah and no, i've got a few other uh, got quite a few bits and bobs that i've been putting together and refining and quite going, a uh, few yeah the I've thing the thing with james is he's entered a lot of competitions over the years so he's got a lot of like he's stuff got some, he's got some stuff like, stuff like ready to go i myself only entered painting competition for the first time last year. So my cabinet has the entry that I had last year and that's it. I've not done anything but else it's not, since. The so. thing is, the, the MPO, the format of it being an open competition, it's just about your display as in collectively. So you could have one thing or you could have 10 or you could have 20. Like it, doesn't, it doesn't necessarily matter. It's more because one of the things, say you take five or six or whatever, one of those things could be the thing that's painted the best in your display. And as a result, that's the thing that gets, that gets potentially awarded something or you could get a, an award for the collective display it varies the open format's very different to like golden demon or like a gold silver bronze sort of like competition yeah, just an explainer for anyone listening who's like not familiar yeah. basically the idea is that you put all of your models like into the cabinet and you've got like a little slot and there's no like category specific stuff there is there is some some vague not vague but there's a there's yeah. a few very broad broad, broad categories yeah. i think they split it into three types of things in terms of I'm going off the top of my head here, but I think it is like, um, like kind of regular models. They then split like tanks and stuff out, mm-hmm. like large models. Yeah, and potentially one other thing they make a distinction. I think it's diorama. One. Diorama. Yeah, and then within that, they also have the three different kind of uh, bandings of the artist. Yeah, being the beginner, um, standard and master. Standard and master. So, um, so oh, it's, it's not as nuanced as like a golden demon, for example, where you just enter a single figure and you're up against like a fifty people, and yeah. you and yeah, there's, there's multiple opportunities for people to win awards and things. Yeah. Which I would say, I would be way more inclined to enter something like this. Yeah, for sure. Than golden demon for the first yeah. time. Still not because I haven't got the time to put that <laughs> together. But yeah. Um, yeah, it's nice to be judged on like the merit of what you've done rather than just being squashed because someone else has done something. Yeah, like, I yeah. think there's room for both. But yeah. But it's good. They're, they're totally, cool they're totally different forms of competition. Yeah, they can coexist. Like they just, just, there's no better or worse. It's just, it's just the different forms of competition. So, yeah. so yeah. But, um, but yeah, I've got quite a fair bit to, to get done, and I'm doing something totally different for this one that I've never done before. So I won't say any more other than that. But Ooh. I'm painting something which is totally outside my comfort zone for something that I normally paint. So it's not red. <laughs> it has some red on it. It does have red. On oh, it. Okay, okay, right. Yeah. Totally outside. His Not that far out his comfort zone. As in the, the, the it's in, just a blood angel in, without black trim. That's yeah, what yeah. I'm so out of my comfort zone here. It's a deaf company model. Like, come on, <laughs> deaf company model. Um, yeah, no, I, I, yeah, it's just something different that I've always wanted to paint. Um, I've had a few sitting in the drawer, and I was just like, oh, I'll give it a go. So, so any guesses in the comments then for what that might be? It's got a few sitting in the drawer, some red on it. 
Um, and he's never painted one before. I mean, that could be quite a wide thing. That's yeah, I know. I'm, I'm interested in what people look. I know what it is. So yeah, I know, I know what it is as well. But, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, just uh, quickly round this section out then with our listeners' comments. Uh, Brad T says, I love the James, in fact, did not finish the Crute Shaper in the background <laughs> immediately after he said he finished it. <laughs> yeah, I know. That was... a, this is a common, this has happened a couple of times. There's been a few times I've bailed you out where I've not cut to the wide and put it on because I know he's not done it. But yeah. I thought I'd call you out this time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, I, I'd say my ratio is about 50-50 and I think with the Shaper, it might be like 45-55 now. But yeah, uh, like, I don't know. Uh, I, I really am enjoying painting it and just didn't want to force it if that makes sense like i would love to have it's a solid, solid excuse I, I love it's the optimism top, when yeah, he's recording he's like tier. oh it's not done yet but i can say it's done because i've got two days before this comes out quickly as far as excuses go that's the gold one isn't it because that's no one can ever go at you for that <laughs> i just wanted i was just enjoying it so much that i, I mean that's not an excuse that's, that's, that's no, but that is the gold tier that's the gold standard excuse i mean i'll, I'll take time. that but that is the reality of it i just i literally am enjoying and painting it because the thing is it's not armored uh, it's completely different the colors are completely different there's hardly any red on it like it's just it's just something completely there's different hardly any, i love that red is the <laughs> come on it's me i like red all right you know i do like um, even though there's no red on it still yeah. enjoying it the, yeah. the blue is really nice yeah, the blue is great. Yeah, yeah. I'm really enjoying it. But, yeah. but <laughs> I we got that far. <laughs> we know. <laughs> we still haven't seen it. I really enjoy it. We still it. haven't seen yeah. it. Um, but it will. Uh, the the flesh shaper will make an appearance at some point very soon. I'm not going to at the MPO. I, we've just heard. Yeah, you can be in the MPO. Well, I think I I think oh. I think <laughs> I think I think it will be done way before and hopefully not, way before not this week's episode because I'm not going to point there and go it's there now. But I think this is maybe, the man who didn't think, who had to announce that he wouldn't be finished in his Mordians for June like he promised he would and he's like oh, I'll be done way before well, I this is why though this is why the Mordians yeah. won't be done because yeah. he's enjoying them too much yeah, yeah. he's yeah. enjoying them too much all right, there's so, no red on it all right, five, five don't stern, get funny about it there's no right, red five stern guard torsos over there like <laughs> I've got the legs done now <laughs> they're not attached to each other like, yeah no um but yeah, I hope to finish it next week. So you won't probably see it in the episode, this episode, but you might see it make an appearance in. Might see it next week. Next week, yeah, Ooh. yeah. So mark it in your that calendars, everyone. Yeah, that yeah. is a tease. Next yeah, Thursday. Yeah, yeah. It is. Yeah, I just realised it has actually got a bit of red on it. <laughs> <laughs> it has, I just realised. Yeah, um, but uh, no, it'll be good. Okay, Jim Davies says, "Wife, need anything picked up uh, for your hobby from the shops? Me." Uh, yeah, if you could add a mini fridge to the Bosch drill and maybe a misting spray, that would be great. <laughs> no, no need for a misting you know, spray. Do you know this reminded me of? I thought this is the perfect shop for an Audi or a Lidl, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Yeah, this that's got Lidl written all over it. Exactly. Lidl's the only place you come home with a drill and like the weekly shop. Yeah. yeah. And also a mini fridge and a mister for your bonsai trees. The thing yeah. is, you actually could get all those things in one shop in there, which is yeah. the best a thing. fan is always, like, there's always a fan and a TV. There's always, like, a specific fan and a specific TV being, like, on sale, center of attention. Mine living. is always miscellaneous power tools, but way, way, way overkill for what anyone doing DIY should be doing. Or yeah. like it's a or massive, barrels. yeah. It'll be like a massive like chainsaw or like some sort of miniature excavator for your garden. It's like, Mul who is buying this? Mold yeah. remover, done. Yeah, like. yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's that sums it up. I mean, that episode, yeah, that's a little bit unhinged. I feel like, <laughs> it actually. did. It did drift into the weeds a little bit. It was good content, I think. That's yeah. one of my favourite episodes we've done, actually. It was fun. That is the one with the wet pilot thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, so, yeah. I got absolutely... My, my inbox got, got full from people messaging me about that. And people I, like <laughs> Demonic Parthos, who says, this may just be me, but the conversation about using a wet pallet was really informational for me. Probably won't put it in a fridge, but who knows? Yeah, I, I, literally, I literally had... After that episode going up, I, 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 on, on Instagram and also on, even on Facebook, I had people messaging me going no one's ever shown me how to set up a wet pallet before like properly like with no air in it and all that kind of stuff or how to lay the sheet or that kind of stuff and I, I actually had someone I'll, I'll try and see if I can find the photo uh, and we'll get it put up but I had someone James did in fact not find the photo <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I had someone that's probably going to be the case I, 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 I had uh, I had someone message me uh, crouching down in a true band style crew shot next to the Tupperware aisle picking up with a, a, the Tupperware with a thumbs up so is um, that not Joe buying his new palette? Yeah, yeah, no, it was not Joe. I can confirm, but uh, but no, um, yeah, it was just really nice to see that um, that Blue Peter esque demonstration 
led to helping people. I think that's one of the things ultimately when we started this that for me really is what I wanted to do with the podcast, I think, like, you know, is to, to give that advice and help and, and create those light bulb moments for people that where they've found something that solves a problem for them. And and yeah, it was just, I, I just want to say thanks to everyone that messaged me about it because I, I, I thought, oh, this is going to go down, like, like go down badly, like doing a demo live on, on, on the podcast or whatever. And it actually turned out to be Pretty good. So, yeah. so yeah. If you want to see any more uh, Blue Peter style demos on the podcast, let us know in the uh, in the comments down below. And uh, if there's enough of them, then we'll probably do some more. Pleasure. I will not be doing any drilling live on the podcast. Well, no, that's, that's probably number one 100%. on my list. I was going to say, yeah, that we have to have a barrel drill off between <laughs> both of you. If we get authority from the listeners to do more demos, that's number one. Okay. So if you want, if you want to see a drill off, <laughs> yeah. then, uh, then let us know. We'll get like ten. Should we, we do a speed like, competition? You know, like when they do the Rubik's say, like, cubes and they've got the little mat and like the little timer. We should yeah. do that for drilling you, the barrel. Do you know right? my favourite thing about those is because, you, and you're gonna have to do this as well when you finish yeah. the last drill. But they they always slam it slam down. It down. Yeah. And when you finish your last barrel, you need to slam it on the table. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Do you know I used to enter them when I was a teenager? Well, the Rubik's cube. Yeah, things. I can do the Rubik's cube thing. Yeah. yeah. That quick, yeah. Well, not. Well, there's not another like, demo. That's another demo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Down. Not yeah. the like 14 seconds, like ridiculous stuff, but like it was like 40, 40 seconds odd. Yeah, That's still, still wild. Not bad. Yeah, yeah. I remember trying to learn. You'd be a lot so slower I, doing drip battle drilling. I can tell. <laughs> you. I got to the bit where you make a, you make like a daisy looking thing. The cross, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, I'm out. And then I'll just slam it on the table nice. to get that feeling. But then yeah. I'm out. Yeah, it's been a minute. Probably a bit rusty, but uh, yeah, probably Excuse, in there already. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> excuses already. Yeah. Uh, Requiem Wraith says, keeping on with the wet palette theme, I use a red grass games wet palette. They seem to be conscious of James's point as the palette paper pack I have, still the original pack that came with the box, is cut slightly smaller than the sponge, so there's always a bit of sponge around the perimeter of the paper. I brought this up because I also have the Ragrass Games wet palette, and I find that the cut is not exactly the same dimensions. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, it is smaller, but not like in an even amount. So yeah. sometimes if I pick, because the sponge kind of stretches a little bit as well, it might be like, you might have a little strip down one side, but like not another. Yeah. And I find that generally they are still, even in like an ideal scenario, it's like a five mil gap, like 10 mil gap around the edge. It's like not a comfortable mm. amount for me personally. Yeah. Um, so if you do use the red grass palette or any other wet palette from any other company, um, the Army Painter one as well, they are usually cut a bit smaller or the exact same size. I would still say go smaller. So like if you were happy with the paper that came with it, I'd happily just get a hobby knife and a ruler and cut them a bit smaller or yeah. give a go uh, the uh, the baking paper that we suggested, mm -hmm. which is what I do personally. Yep. Mm. Uh, Morgan Fellows, member of the team, says, I use the exact same system of replaceable Doritos salsa jars <laughs> as George. They are the perfect size and shape and getting a new one involves eating salsa, which is an additional win. Uh, wins all the way down. The only question is mild or hot? Hot. Obviously, can I can yeah. I just interject? I noticed that something bred in the comments of the last podcast that oh, I literally there was like the biggest debate over the best water pot. Like, I don't oh know yeah, if anyone else noticed yeah. that? Yeah, like we had we had pickle every, jars, everything was being jam thrown jars, in the mix. Yeah. candles, anything. Yeah, the, the salsa thing just seems too small. Yeah, me. I agree. The, the IKEA candle all day, either, all day long. The, they, the they candles are. you use are massive. Yeah, They'll they be bold. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot about the candle. <laughs> it's, the candle thing's mental. It's great. Do you just burn the candle through to get the, the, the glass? So I used to use the Bon Mamon uh, jam jar. <laughs> yeah. I used, to use, I used to use one of those. What? I don't know what you're laughing at. Like I saw, I, I saw, I saw plenty of people. <laughs> I saw plenty of people who, who, I expect the, I didn't expect the brand name to come out like that. Oh, that's what it is. Bon yeah. Mamon. Uh, <laughs> so Bon Mamon. Bon Mamon. Yeah, I use. So yeah. I use a Bon Mamon glass. Uh, I, can't, I can't talk now. <laughs> you kill me. You honestly kill me. Oh, like, I try and say. It, like, I try and back. say it again. <laughs> I don't know why that caught me off guard. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad it caught you off guard. Yeah. So, so I oh. use a Bon Mamon. I can't talk, honestly. So I use a Bon Mamon jam jar and like loads of other people in the comments were saying that they use one of those also. But then, so I used that. I went to Ikea. We bought a load of candles for the house and obviously it's like quite a big jar. One burnt down and then, you know, you let, they, you're left with the the um, candle like wick part or the, the metal plate that the candle's on it was stuck in the bottom. And while I was washing it up to get put it in the glass recycling and, and the hot water I was using, just the, the the metal plate just came off. And I was like, that's like amazing water pot for like miniature painting. So I used it, 
Like, I love that you're calling it a pot. It is a bowl. Yeah, ew. it's pie? it's bigger than can, a cereal. Pie. Can we get like bowl. a bit? <laughs> Like, can we get a picture of it? Yeah, there like, will be. The diameter, there will be a picture of the water pot. There. Joe, the diameter yeah. is bigger than a cereal bowl. It's not. I'll, it I'll, is. Oh, uh, we thinking about it. See, look, that says enough. It might be. Yeah, yeah. I, don't know. I, I mean, think, that's wild. Yeah. If it's a bowl, a bowl is arguably. It's wider than it is tall. Worse yeah. than worse than uh yeah, but so is your little salsa pot. Yeah. No, it's not. It's a little square. Salsa pot is wider than it is no, tall. It's perfectly square. I don't think it is. It is. George has had the room. I oh, know those salsa well, jars inside. Are, I want pictures of both. I use a jam jar. I use a bowl my mom. So it's. Uh, it's <laughs> <laughs> my, Why is it tickling you so much? It's just the name of a jam jar. What is wrong with you? So mine's fine, but I want pictures of both of these contraptions now. Should we have, should we have a bowl and, off? Salsa and. Should we have, and should we have a bowl off? off? What was you using? The jam jar. Is it a tall one? Just a normal jam bon jar. Mom one. Just a bowl my mom. <laughs> Just a normal jam jar. I'll put a picture. Yeah, look, there's all three of them. We'll do a comparison. There's all three of them. There you go. There's all three of ours up yeah. there now. I would yeah. say mine's probably the most normal. I haven't seen every of yours. But <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it did spark uh, quite a discussion as it has just done now. So I think it's, that's almost on par with like the base rim stuff. And that, that is something you can get into because people have a preference. And... I, I, I just look at it this way. The, the bigger the, the one that you have, the more water it holds, which means when you introduce paint into it, the, the, it takes longer for it to get dirty. That's my thought process on it's true. it. It's a good point. Okay, last but not least, I've been waiting to read this one off. It's from Joe C. I know exactly what this is. <clears throat> Joe, James, and George. Love the podcast, new listener and subscriber, but decided to write this little poem to celebrate some of the entertainment I've had so far listening to the back catalogue. This is the nicest thing anyone's ever done for me, I think. <laughs> Genuinely. <laughs> Have you ever had a poem written about uh, Right. <clears throat> right, let's see if I can give this justice. From one Joe to another as well. From so one Joe to another. Yeah. Even more special. Let's see if I can give this justice. We're under siege, boys. No time to spare. Crack out the brushes and show some flair. Who needs more than one to be a hero? I'm painting this Titan with just a triple zero. <laughs> Let's up our game, lads. Give 100%. Leave the sub assemblies out, Joe. Get to the main events. Get that model built, every edge neatly trimmed. Let the battle commence over the colour of base rims. <laughs> <laughs> this is where the rubber hits the road. The James-isms flow. The perspective becomes real as the paints come and go. You want a blacker than black, to, you want blacker than black to stay grimmer and dark or leave the 70.950 out and hide well in the park? <laughs> it's a question of taste, not a matter of age. So don't go writing the off the young lad in a fit of brown rage. Young George makes a stand as he crunches his refreshers. He harnesses the sugar and stands out against the peer pressure. <laughs> but all in all, the lads know what to bring. A chat about painting by the power of nose rings. <laughs> Blends and jokes so smooth they'd make a blood angel cry. And the shout goes up. Let the people magnify. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, incredible. Incredible. I remember the, the you were away when that comment came in. Yeah, yeah. And... We, we, was, we, we were like sitting in the office and uh, I don't know if it was like you or Rio. I saw it coming. There was just like a bit of like, there was no, no one was saying anything. We were all just working. And then we just said, someone's commented a poem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all instantly like reading it. Oh, brilliant. Well, thank you for that. Yeah, uh, that was incredible. Absolutely tremendous. Tremendous. Future, future t-shirt, definitely. On the yeah, back. Yeah. yeah. The whole, just print the whole thing. Yeah. yeah I want like a Star Wars like, like intro. Scroll, yeah. Scroll. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah, with yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Brilliant. If you enjoy listening to these podcast episodes every single week, I'd like to ask that you could please do us one small, tiny favor in return and hit that subscribe button on YouTube or the follow button on your podcast app. It takes only two seconds and it really, really helps us out and it allows us to bring you these episodes for free every single week. Thank you so much. Back to the episode. Topic this week, planning your Warhammer projects the right way. So 
Joe, you alluded to earlier that you're starting a little army project. I know the time in here is just impeccable. Yeah. It's like it was. It's like it's like it was coordinated. It's like it's yeah, planned. I mean, it, you'd say that sarcastically, but it wasn't. No, <laughs> like, it wasn't you had no, no idea. No, it genuinely wasn't. You no. had no yeah. idea. Uh, but it does. It does line up quite yeah. nicely. Yeah. No, this topic was actually at a suggestion from one of the listeners. So thank you for the topic suggestion. Uh, if you want to leave your own topic suggestions on the podcast, uh, go and become a Patreon member. We have a special area in the Discord where you can submit topic ideas like this one. Uh, yeah, we want to talk about planning kind of as a whole. It works out quite well because James is sort of midway through doing an army. I'm sort of starting an army-ish and you're looking at starting one. So. I'm so glad you didn't say midway through your own army. Yeah. No. Well, I, I know where I'm, I stand. George is like, I'm nearly done <laughs> with, <laughs> with the torsos. I'm nearly so. done with the limbs. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah. No, uh, planning is something that we've spoken about a lot, mm -hmm. but I think people still overlook just based on pure excitement. And when I say overlook, I mean, like we get quite, we like to get quite nuanced about mm -hmm. how we plan stuff, don't we, James in particular. Um, let's rewind all the way back then. So I guess there's three sort of main points in this. You've got the kind of like the idea of having an army, kind of like where you're at. You've got the, I've bought all this stuff, now what the hell do I do? And then the sort of build prep stage bleeding into the painting stage. So I guess we could like hit all of those as we go. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah so you've good. spoken about like planning out your list and that sort of situation. How's that been? Yeah, that was, um, so I have a little bit of gaming experience from 8th edition. And Kill Team. You play Kill Team. Kill Team, it. when they first brought it back, as I've spoken about before, I got quite into that. Um, but that was still very different to 40K, I would say. Um, but I played some 7th edition. That was when I got actually back into it. And then I played 8th edition semi-regularly, I would say. Mm -hmm. Um I think touched ninth once to try and learn the rules and we just all kind of decided that it which wasn't for us. Um, so didn't play ninth at all really. Um, and then now it's 10th. And as, as we were building up to 10th coming out, I did get the feeling of like, you start hearing the whispers, don't you, about like what it's going to be like, the changes they're going to make. Um, we obviously know a lot of like, content creators and stuff so when we were at um warhammer fest and they were demoing it mm -hmm. um you could you know you could get some we, we got to talk to the developers even and just yeah. hearing like hearing about the new system and everything and i was kind of like oh i could this does sound like i could get back in on it i think me and you spoke about it a bit at the time of like oh they're simplifying things down it's gonna be much more accessible like much easier to get into and i kidded myself to a degree of thing like oh this will be the one where i can like finally get in but um, I think after the, I don't want to say burnout, but after the like rush of me and James getting them Hawk Lords done, I think that kind of checked me out because like, mm. I'd already, I'd already painted those like which are going to be like studio models. So I was like, do I really want to like do this again? Mm. But, and then there was like a big break, and now I'm like kicking off the Blood Angels. And by now, like there's all of the new Space Marine stuff that came out uh, towards the latter end of last year and stuff. So I guess that's kind of reinvigorated my yeah excitement for it. I think yeah, for whatever reason at the time. It just didn't get me. It, it didn't get me enough to get me in. Um, so I just didn't really even learn much about uh, temp edition or anything like that. And then after a while, you do start to hear like the negativity. There's always people moaning, and I think yeah, but change change is never taken. You know, change is something that yeah. I just think potentially like I let the negativity, like especially online, yeah. Um, kind of make me think oh there's no point do yeah. you know what i mean like which is stupid really and like well, we, should, we should know especially as people that do what we do we should know to not like completely buy into just no, whatever exactly. people are moaning about online um but it's a system that like has a several year long life cycle so it's funny because like it first comes out and everyone's like oh it's new it's amazing and then like a couple months later everyone's whinging about it because of the state of it but forgetting the fact of like this is gonna be like a three four year ride and like kind of now I think it's matured a little bit. Maybe that you're not hearing that's, that as that's, much. That's normal because what happens is, I mean, obviously I've played quite a few editions before I, start, I, I hung up the dice, so to speak, and stopped playing. But like, but when he said hung up the dice, I imagine like, you know, those fuzzy dice people have in their car. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, 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 did you, what did you think I was rolling? Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, um, but um, I, I, I find that an edition will be like that first couple, when it comes out, people are like, oh, this is not how I remember the previous edition or it's different to the one. They don't like it. Then an update comes out and then like, oh, actually, that's maybe a bit better. Or maybe that's still not as good. And then you get like the latter two years or so of like that edition. 
where people just get used to it because that's the addition now and then the cycle repeats yeah. so, so you must like, remember this with kill team like when the new version of kill team came out everyone was like doing their nut well so i and now it's I like didn't, everyone loves it i didn't play the new version of kill team because i kind of resented a little bit that at the start of it any of the kill teams that you'd built kind of were wouldn't work they wouldn't mm. carry over I kind of didn't like that so I didn't bother going into the Simon from the either. team was the same he, he made loads of kill teams like he made all these awesome kill teams for his because like, he obviously he wanted to play but he didn't want to do an army or whatever for time constraints and so I was like yeah like he had like how was it like remember when we had, he had uh, loads yeah like at Christmas too he was going to bring up a load and play like in Warhammer World and yeah he had like eight or nine kill teams and he was like I can't you can't even use them, them so yeah, yeah but I, can't, I also kind of think like things with like the codexes and stuff like you always when a, when a new edition starts people are waiting for their codexes and i remember specifically in my gaming experience like i got stung mm. quite bad for anyone else that might remember this as well um as i say eighth edition was the main one that i was playing and i wanted to do um dark angels and Dark Angels did not get a codex supplement for like ages. Yeah, I right. felt like, or like, so I was playing basically just, uh, I was playing like index, like pre codex space marines against people that had like codex space yeah. marines. And it was just like ridiculous. That, that's, so, that's one thing for me. I think uh, touching upon the topic that we're talking about with army planning and stuff, that's one thing that I, I think if, and I don't want to get into the gaming side too much, but like ge genuinely, like if, in, within an edition, everyone got an update and every faction or army got a thing. And I know that's a massive ask because of how much rules writing and how much investment of time that is. And I, look, I know it's a complete, you know, genie in a lamp situation. You know, it's not like it, it can possibly happen. But I think that's the one thing for me that I completely synergize with you on. It's like, it's frustrating. Like you, you, you waiting for your thing that you love to get all the things. Yeah. So then you can create the army and start that first bit of planning what your army is going to be. Well, and it did, it does factor into my planning. So the reason I've picked Space Marines currently is because it was, I mean, Orcs have just come out, which I pro if if we were a little bit further down the line when I was making this decision, I might have landed on Orcs instead because the Codex has just, uh, just come out or just coming out. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, one thing I do think the GW have done really well is they released the kind of schedule, yeah, the yeah. release schedule yeah. of the Codex. Yeah, so I'll you at that. least know... You know, you are if you are radar. a diehard, um, you know, uh, whatever army player, like diehard Tau player, you could have looked at the thing and gone, okay, it's coming out roughly early 2024, something like that. So out of the ones that were already out at the minute, um, you know, preferably, I probably would have preferred to do something like chaos -y or or something like that, but that codex isn't coming out for a while as far as I'm aware. Um and I wanted to have something that had a proper codex. Space Marines just seemed like an easy thing that has some cool models that I like. So I'm not necessarily doing like the army that I love the most because my part of my plan was to game with them. I've taken that part into consideration as well. Does that make sense? Yeah, well, like, it's a perfect choice. They're heavily supported and it means that you can pick any chapter that you want and, and uh, with a custom scheme and do whatever you want. It's what we, it's what we actually, in a lot of the, times I speak to clients so the thing that we recommend the most when it comes to yeah. it's, why we, it's why we do a lot of custom schemes is because because it gives well, you flexibility the, the, well the, the flexibility thing with the custom schemes that has completely changed now like you can just paint your blood angels and then use them in different space marine detachments that give them what would typically be considered the imperial Ultimate. fists yeah. rule well it's funny you should the, say that because part of my purpose for the way I'm doing my blood angels is one, I personally don't want loads of like named characters anyway, because I don't, this is just not my flavor. Like I just want to have just sort of general guys. But within that, I'm just buying only like generic space marine models. I'm not doing any chapter specific stuff to Blood Angels, knowing that if I do want to game with them down the line, I'm not going to be locked into Blood Angels. They're going to be painted like Blood Angels, but. It, for all intents and purposes, so, they could be Ultramarines. Like, but the thing is now, it's literally like with the detachments, it's not even like that's an ultramarines detachment with an ultramarines rule. It's got its own name mm. and you can put any space marines you want into it. And the picture on it is ultramarines. So they're kind of hinting towards you that this is the, this is the ultramarines focused one. Um, 
And then in the supplements, you get specific Blood Angels ones where, yeah. say, for example, you did want to take Mephiston. Yeah. You would have to look at a Blood Angel specific one. Yeah. Um, but with mine, if because I'm doing like just a generic. Because you're doing all generic, you can, yeah. you can pick and choose whatever ones you exactly. want. Exactly. Um, so, I mean, most of the time, you could have done that before anyway with friends and stuff. Like mm -hmm. tournaments might be different. I will just caveat when I'm talking about gaming, I'm not talking about tournaments at all. I don't have a clue about the the specifics of what you're allowed to do and stuff like that. I'm talking about playing with friends. Um, and then the other thing was the other two guys I mentioned, one of them's doing Tau and one of them is doing Someone Necrons. Someone has to. Yeah, one of them's doing Necrons. I, you know, slowly as we've been doing this thing, I'm like really coming around to Tau as a vibe, as like a, what they look like. I quite like the... Tau, word bearers, what next? Raven, yeah. Raven Guard. You know? Yeah, yeah. quite like... Not, don't be stupid. <laughs> um... um so, yeah. So I, I maybe would have maybe would have looked at Tau because their codex has just come out, and I quite enjoyed painting that test uh, little tester crew. Um, but one of the other guys kind of a bit more of a diehard Tau fan, and I know he's going to be doing that first anyway. So yeah, that kind of worked into it, and I knew that I would be uh, I, I would enjoy the certain space marine models that I already own, and the certain space marine things that I want to paint. So that's where maybe my planning was a little bit different to yours in terms of picking an army. I don't necessarily love Space Marines yeah. so much. Um, Let's go into a little bit more uh, of the nuance of that then. So was it sitting and like doing a list in like the app or was it just looking at the sort of units that you roughly want to tally up points wise? I Basically, so I knew that um, I didn't want to spend like loads of money on new models and and things like that I knew that I had some space marine models just kind of sitting around so I was like do I actually want to paint them um, how can I work those into the list potentially um, so I started with those and then I looked at what the Leviathan half contains and what I like out of those um, are you doing that then are you going with one of the box sets yeah so I've got the space marines half okay I'm not I don't think I can fit it all into the full space marine half basically is around a thousand points. Right. Um, There's quite a lot of characters in there though, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. The, the, There's if, not a ton if, of models. If you took the whole half of, of the whole marines half, you, you're pushing a thousand points. Um, and obviously I've got a couple of other models that I wanted to push in. So I'll probably mostly use that and then I'll, I'll sub in a few different ones. But Again, I'm not really looking at it from like being a gaming point of view. There's a ton of cool models in that um, Space Marine half. I like. Um, we've we've spoken before. I'm in like the minority where I like I like the primaris tanks. Mm. So I like repulsors and impulsors and gladiators and stuff. Um, so there are a lot of the combat patrols and other box sets, aren't they? Yeah. So I definitely want to get. Um, I had this like thought process of getting a um, repulsor and putting all the Infernus Marines in it mm -hmm. with like a captain. Yeah. So just having this big like... Barbecue wagon. Yeah, yeah, pretty much, yeah. So I think I'm going to be doing that. Um, so yeah, like the Infernus Marines I think are pretty cool. I've always liked Flamer stuff. I think Flamers are fun. Um, Terminators are obviously... Terminators are quite high points though, so I don't know whether they're going to feature in... They might have to make way. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the the... It really wasn't that much thought going into it. Like I, I'm, I'm kind of just wanting to uh, paint some cool models and then play some games with them. But I think the list writing aspect, I was doing it on the app, and the list writing aspect is so much easier now. Hmm. There's so many less restrictions of what you can put in in your lists and how detachments work and stuff. And that is a big reason why I think it, the current edition, does benefit. Um, people who care a bit more about painting potentially because for someone like me the revelation that there was just this pdf that i could look at and it just said intercessors this many points i was like oh yeah yes, this is for me yeah like this you don't have to you don't have to you don't have the restriction of well you need to at least you know how detachments used to work mm -hmm. where it's like you have to have a character plus three uh, infantry type units yeah. or whatever like there's no restrictions like that didn't anymore. it get like, like really specific in ninth like who has what weapon and grenades no, and no like, so oh, the units used to come with specific weapon loadouts and you could pay extra points to change weapons and swap things out that was always a thing though yeah, yeah that was yeah. always a thing yeah, but what I'm getting at is what it used to be was when you were writing your list detachment what detachments you picked used to um, 
limit you to what you're allowed to choose. So you would choose this detachment and you would have to pick, you would almost effectively in any detachment, you would have to pick a character and three like basic infantry units before you were allowed to add anything else. Right. That's what it felt like. Whereas now you just add whatever you want. Yeah. Like it, it, you get benefits, I guess, if you add regular infantry units, you can use more of them and they're probably yeah. better at objectives. So for me, the layman then who's never played before, so if I'm going to start, easier. if I'm going to start like say a thousand point list, I literally just need to, however I get to that many points is, you can fit it in however whatever want. detachment you want. As long as the, the restrictions are now more like this type of model can't be in this detachment in terms of like, um, if it adds a blood angel keyword and it's not a blood angel. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. sort of thing. Um, so yeah, I, that that's what it was really. It was just working out what models I like, what models I fancy painting, adding them all up in the app and getting yeah. to around about a thousand points, and um, kind of going from there. I haven't. I'm I'm waiting to get this Underworlds thing finished before you start. Before I start actually well, painting. Well, that now is the perfect time to plan it, though. So now so, is the perfect time to plan it because I, I still want to do, even with all the freedom of the detachments, I still want to do a custom scheme just because I like the idea of being able to. I, almost opposite to you i like the idea of being able to get all the named characters but kind of bring them in and make them a different character yeah do you know what i mean so like you mean as like a starting model and turn it into your own yeah, yeah not even heavily converting it maybe like maybe i i will just paint uh an asriel but it's just not asriel do you yeah know what i mean like that kind of thing yeah um so for gaming purposes it'll be asriel but I suppose um, from a planning perspective, then yours isn't too dissimilar to mine in the sense of you want to be able, you want to enjoy painting and such. Yeah, that's the, mine, the, that's mine, the first, that's the key yeah. part, and then I also will just play games with them as well. But the key is enjoying painting it. Yeah. As artists, we know how time-consuming painting miniatures is, especially if you want to achieve a high standard for tabletop or display. Life is busy, and we don't all have eight hours a day to paint. Plus, if you're still early in your painting journey, it may feel that you're a long way off ever owning your own beautiful army for your games. For 10 years, Siege Studios has been delivering bespoke miniature painting commissions to collectors and gamers all over the world. We have a world-class team of artists from Golden Demon winners to ex-studio painters, collating hundreds of years of collective experience. Here at Siege, we offer a series of painting levels and services to meet your needs and budget, whether you want a favorite character for your display or a stunning gaming army. We pride ourselves on offering well above the industry standard of quality and our customer experience. To see our gallery, learn more about our services and get a quote now, head over to siegestudios.co.uk or head to the link in this episode's description. Yeah, with mine, um, I guess that's probably the error that I made because I was thinking about gaming with it and I don't think, I think when I started the project, I was like, I'm only going to paint and now I'm like starting to get a bit further down the road and I've sort of learned a bit more about how 10th works and how easy it would be to kind of get there. I'm thinking about gaming a bit more and I wish that I'd probably planned the buying of models part a little bit more tactically. But I purposefully reserved myself and didn't go out and like buy like loads of stuff and like start sets and like have a big pile of things to do because I know that I might change my mind at a later point. So I've just started with like a couple of boxes. But yeah, um, yeah I guess that's the evolution of that. See, I'm completely different. I'm not interested in the gaming side at all whatsoever. So I'm just like, I want to do a Morty Nine Guard Regiment. So I'm, I'm, I've gone. But this is the beauty of it. 60 infantry, the, commands, a couple of command squads, a couple of flag men, banner men. But the, the beauty of it is, and I, I hope if they do make any changes as they go 11th, 12th, whatever, I hope this detachment thing sticks and the openness of the list building sticks because the beauty of that is, is that you can paint this army without gaming in mind at all. Yeah, I literally have. I, 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 and... But you could game with it tomorrow. Yeah, like no, you could I get fit that. it in a detachment really easily. Yeah, like because there's so many yeah. less restrictions. I mean, like yeah. that part of it, I really like. That that like, will make it more fun for I suppose for people that that do just want to collect an army because they like the army and they don't really care what models or units they have or you know like I. Well, so that's I, exactly I, us, isn't it? Sure. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, I suppose yeah. so. But I, I so that's I, what I'm saying. I think it benefits people who care more about painting because now you get more of a reason you, you have more of a reason to only pick the models that you enjoy painting yeah. unless you're going to get super competitive go to tournaments chase them out or whatever yeah but you almost have more of it like my the the whole stumbling block block before was well yeah i could do um you know i could do space marines but i'm gonna have to paint 30 tactical marines minimum do you know what i mean and then yeah. i might get some of the models i like in on top of that but yeah. See, Whereas now it's like I bought these. I wanted to paint these anyway. Like I just picked these because they're fun and I could paint with them. 
because uh, yeah. I wanted to paint them and oh result I can use them in the game like yeah. there's no there's nothing I have to completely rejig my whole list to fit them in yeah. I just take well, that out that's that exactly that what happened with my first Born Blood Angel army because I I had set it out all a certain way and I'd made it match the Force Org 100% you know and then the edition changed or I think the codex changed and then all of a sudden like as an example five man assault squads couldn't take double melter gun and I was I'd made all my combat assault squads have double melter gun and, and I was left with like about eight melter guns that had no friends yeah. and then, well the other yeah. thing I would say um, with that is that now that the points aren't off of the uh, aren't you know the different war gear doesn't cost points yeah yeah it's way easier for you to just you could still if you were playing a casual game you could still put those all out and just be like he only has one by the way yeah yeah like, it's yeah. the same amount of points so it's yeah. no one's yeah, going to be like difference. annoyed yeah. do you know what yeah, I mean yeah, like no. Um, whereas if it was all different points, it would get a bit more complicated because I'd be yeah. like, "Well, is he like adding an extra thing, or like, are they, is he not work that out properly?" Or yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Points yeah. That? yeah. Like, I don't know. It just it just feels a bit easier. No, to, no, to definitely. From what stuff. from what I've seen, it does. Um, uh, but yeah. So that's maybe maybe one day. Maybe I will I, I will pick up gaming again in the future at some point. I don't know. I I, I would never say no. I suppose. But, if it's a scenario where but, like you're going to paint all of those models anyway, which you are. Yeah. And you're just doing it for yourself and you're just going to have them in a cabinet and they're going to look nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we went, oh, let's play a game of 10 for like a thousand points. You'd be able to literally just look in your cabinet and go, oh, actually, I've, yeah. I've got yeah. a list That's yeah. a valid point. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's part of the, the, the biggest step of the planning was that. And I guess that's the biggest difference between me and you is that I started planning for the yeah. game. But then again, that's proven that <laughs> that it's the, the the way they've done the detachments and the points and everything is, is really helpful because you can now change your mind at this point and be like, Oh, actually, I'm going to work out a bit more about the game and yeah. blah, blah, blah. Okay. Well, let's kick this uh, more into our wheelhouse then for the, yeah. uh, the paint perspective podcast. Mm -hmm. Painting. Yeah. Uh, so let's, you've got your models, you've got your stack of grey shame ready to go. There's a few ways to tackle planning an army, I suppose. Anywhere from don't plan it at all, just wing it, do a few models at a time. Some people like to go squad by squad. James likes to just build everything and prime everything and do everything red and then do everything that's black and then do everything that's green and yeah. then do everything. You've got a lot of ways to sort of tackle this. So I'm intrigued because you've not done, you've said yourself, you've not really ever done like proper big army projects before. So now 47 episodes deep into me and James talking about painting thousands of models. Yeah. What are you thinking? Have, so, have you learned so, any of the little bits of a uh, bit of info that we've we've so, along the way? Again, because the gaming thing is there, I think that changes things a little bit mm -hmm. because I at very least need to get everything built together because I want to game with it. And I also is that in the sense of like because you could game with it at any point, even if it's not painted. Even if it's not painted. So basically, what I want to do is the kind of and I've already said this to in the in the group chat. I, I, I want to, I think what I would aim to do is get everything base coated and everything like shaded. So I would probably, as it's a thousand points and it's not like I'm doing, when I did the Necron thing, it was 2,500 points of Necrons, I think. Is that, as, as somebody who doesn't really know points values, is that a significant number that of models? was a lot of points back then. How no, I many times of models? Yeah, so, uh, yeah well, that Necrons models. army that I've spoken about doing before had 60 infantry models um, and then everything else. I, I, I don't know what the exact model count was, but it had a lot of models. So it probably similar to my Mordians then. Maybe. It had 60 infantry. Yeah. Um, it was about 12 school pack destroyers. Yeah. Yeah. So we're um, getting into the. Uh, well, you chunk. ain't even. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's why it was very overwhelming. So I think Space Marines, a little bit more elite in terms of model count. I'm not going full infantry, loads of infantry. I'm going quite elite infantry, okay. which is probably why it's not going to be very good for a thousand points. But for painting purposes... Is that just to reduce the model count and make it easy for yourself? Is that because you just happen to want to paint those models? I think it's a bit of both. But I do think in general, a lot of the like more elite units just look cooler anyway. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Um, but um, yeah, so I think in general, what I'd like to do is build it all, base coat it all, and then get some shading on all of it. And then I would be happy to game with it. Yeah, yeah. And then I can take my time individually, like maybe unit by unit in terms of like fully painting it. But that's what I always say, like that, that I know you said about, I, I, I build them all, I clean them all, base, uh, put the basic material on, undercut them all, prime them all, maybe not red, um, and then like, et cetera. Like I always say this, like the return point 
is not right at the beginning of the process, which with when it comes to working a project is it makes it 10 times better for you because there's nothing worse than doing that with one box, getting it all the way to fruition and completion and finishing the thing. And then looking back at your gray shame and going, I've got to do that all again on everything else. But that's why I do recommend you build everything, clean everything, put the basin material on everything, undercoat everything, get it all to the point where the main armor color is on. And then every time you you can just cherry pick and go, oh, today I fancy starting painting the bike squad. So I'm just going to start painting those, get those through. You know, it, it, I think, yeah. and then if you do decide halfway through, oh, do you know what? I've had enough of bikes. I mean, I want to paint some scouts or some intercessors you haven't got to go and get a box and build it and clean like you're literally like oh, i'm going to start putting the black on that on those now it's just the return yeah point so much uh, my, easier. my counterpoint to that is because i i'm kind of trying something new with mine because whenever i've done army projects in the past it has been very mostly they've been for commissions anyway so it's been very regimented build everything get everything done process oriented and this time around partly because initially i said to myself that it was gonna be like oh high-end gaming that ship has sailed there going to be all golden demon level you know 10 years from now but because of that like i knew i wanted to work on them more individually so i didn't want to buy it off more than i could chew and i didn't want to spend three months just doing like black highlights on everything so i've i've done mine in a my rule is box by box yeah, yeah. so i'm trying not to get too refined of it because like for example the way i would normally like to paint a display level model would be on its own mm -hmm there's going to have to be some sort of trade-off where like a box of intercessors is 10 models. I'm not going to paint them all like one at a time, but if I'm going to have two boxes of intercessors, I'll probably do like one box at a time. Mm. Counterpoint like to what you said being, it's a bit more manageable. One, in terms of space, I haven't got to have like all of these built models like out and about. I haven't even got to buy them all yet. Like I kind of have a rough idea of the stuff I want to get, but I'm just kind of doing yeah, it piece yeah. by piece. And it's kind of just sort of like arcing project. Downside being, I can't just play with them unpainted and like get a feel for the game there is yeah. that though that's the one thing that doing it the way i suggested helps because even if they're undercoated you can still play a game yeah and then you can go actually uh, that unit maybe isn't as good in my army so maybe they'll be like not the priority thing to paint i to think that you've, that has entered my head yeah because i i even said to to like you can't go um, round in circles doing that as well, can't you? you? End up like never actually getting anywhere because you're constantly changing your list. It up. does happen, yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the one of the guys is like had already been painting um, his army, so he's like nearly done with his thousand points. And I, I did say like I, I was gonna, I, I didn't actually say this, but I was gonna say like, how do we feel about like how is everyone with like, are we happy to do some test games while we're learning like without them being painted or just them being built or something? Um because of that very thing where I was like, what if, you know, I put all this time painting them and then they're rubbish or I end up not using them or something like that. But I think because, because of the, the sole thing of this or the main focus being it's all models that I like and all models that I want to paint anyway, I'm not going to be as annoyed if I paint them and then I come to a game and maybe I don't want to use them in a the game again. So I've still just painted some models that I like. Yeah, fair. So it's not as much. I can understand it more when people are painting just to game. Like the painting is the slog for them. They're not enjoying it and they just want to game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then 100% like uh, I'd be interested to see how more gaming focused people feel about that. But um, I would assume that it's like recommended to play some games without them being fully painted first otherwise you're just wasting your time yeah i think for me because i'm picking models that i really want to paint first and foremost anyway not as worried about that so that's why i've set myself the the goal of the kind of base coating them all shading them all and then i'll like fully base them yeah and then it's like okay i can game with these now and then as i go through with them i can actually start highlighting and, and bringing them up good way of doing it yeah. let's get into the nitty gritty then of the the actual like processes mm -hmm. One thing I'm curious about, are you taking into account uh, build choices in the sense of like, oh, I'm going to build this guy with this gun because it's actually like looks easier to paint or quicker to paint or anything like that? Or are you going there like, well, I'm just doing this because I really enjoy painting, so I'm just going to make everything look cool? So I had this with the Necrons because the Necron infantry has two gun options and I didn't know the rules at all. I just picked the one that looked coolest. easier to paint. No, not coolest. Easier to paint. <laughs> um, coolest would be the double barrel one. Yeah. The double one. Yeah. And I just stuck the single one on all of them. Yeah. Um, because 
yeah, it, I, I was like, coolest was was definitely it. But that was, I was thinking of painting. Um, to be honest, I don't really think, especially because I'm coming from the Leviathan box, I haven't got a lot of weapon options and things like that. It's pretty stock. It's like a lot of them. I don't like, remember there being any options. Yeah, a lot of them are like push fit and stuff. Yeah. So all I have is, all I have to add to it really is a Primaris Captain, which I already have built, which is um, the limited edition plasma pistol, power fist one. What model? Which is one of my favorite marine models they've released. Not a model. Had it built for ages. I, I posted this on Instagram not too long ago. I did a trade with Will from the team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he sent me that model. I sent him another model. And I've been too scared to paint it ever since just because I love the model so much. I absolutely adore that model. It's yeah. one of my favorite ones. I'm going to drop it, drop it, but Daz's version of it in that color scheme yeah, yeah, yeah. is over there with the head swap. I think it's got a head swap on it. It might actually, it might not, but... Has he put the flames on it? And yeah, stuff? It has, yeah, yeah. That is, that is literally one, is of, one of my favorite, favorite like heavy metal paint jobs paint job, like yeah recent it, paint jobs. It's, yeah. it's it's such a cool model yeah and um so i've got that that i want to put in so then but I, I do like um obviously makes sense with dark angel stuff but i do like plasma stuff as well and he's got a plasma pistol which is cool there's certain things in terms of like characters leading in leading units and only certain because that's a new thing that you wouldn't have known of, i suppose death stars are back from what i've heard char- characters are attached or can be attached to units now yeah. um which is really cool but then there's certain things of like if you want a, if you want to attach a captain to a hell blaster thing he has to have a plasma pistol and things like oh, that right, so okay. oh. so yeah um so i was kind of thinking okay well i definitely want to use that captain so do i maybe get some hell blasters so that i can put him with the hell blasters because he's got his... so yeah other than that like i don't think there's too many options really that i have with my my things because I, I, as I say I want to get some tanks and stuff but let's say hypothetically you did have the option and they were full multi-part I think I probably would take ease <laughs> of painting yeah. into consideration especially because the points thing doesn't matter anymore yeah like I was saying to James it's way easier for me to just say especially if like it's a repulsor or something it's got like loads of guns I don't like, hardly anyone is really the whole point of like WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get on your models. It's to make it easy for tournament To make it players. easier for the opponent to know what you've got. Yeah. Um, for a bunch of people like learning the game, no one's going to be looking at my repulsor and going, oh, I didn't realize you had the so-and-so yeah, missile. Yeah. That yeah. looks like the... the Shield. Da, 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 yeah, to me, yeah. like, do you know what I mean? Like, And I do, I, I do feel a bit better about that stuff. The more that I get to know the projects that we do for clients, there are so many things on specifically Tau and Eldar that are war gear options that literally don't even have a part that exists. Like there's things that like you can, because we get asked to do certain things on like Eldar. Um, the classic one is on Eldar. Like what's the flyer things? Like, the what? Skyrunners? No, the, no, um, the actual ship. Um, uh, what do I want about? The um, Falcon. Yeah, like the Falcons and things. The, They've got a the few wave different. Serpent. Wave Serpent. Is yeah. The, yeah. There's certain war gear options that you could always take on those that, there aren't actually a part for so oh, like, like the serpent stone and stuff like things that. like that yeah, so like yeah. the, the oh so you've got people who have like made a list in like an app and yeah, they see yeah. the and they'll put option. it on their client and they'll put it on their client spec sheet and be like um yeah i want this load out and then we'll be like well that doesn't even that part doesn't even exist yeah um so like knowing that that exists in the game does make me feel a bit better about uh you know putting a a certain version of a bolt rifle on instead of another certain version that gets me rifle. with the with the space marines is they're like the four different bolt magazine them. things that go on, on that the, one yeah. i just think put whatever one you find. yeah other than the one there's, there's one they, that there's they, one that changes the backpack as well isn't there that's the hell blasters have a different haven't, oh, they, okay. haven't they changed it so that like, it doesn't matter what magazine you put on the gun now or something like that i hope well, so i think, I think it's based I on so. i think it's based <laughs> on, i know that i know that a stalker bolt rifle should have like the bigger scope and yeah like i think that. it's literally I think the reason people say that it doesn't matter now is because of the points thing. Yeah. Like, it I, doesn't I, matter. I, like, I'm sorry, but like, I'm, I, I think that the box mag on the bolter just looks the best. Don't care. Like, yeah. I used to always just big, think it was an aesthetic choice. I didn't even mag. know that there was like rules. Yeah, yeah it's different rules. One's, yeah. one's like an assault version. One's a heavy version. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, like, I get, I understand why. Right, some of them do look basically the same. One of them's like the mag is straight. One of them's the mag is curved. Curves, yeah, but yeah. I've always yeah. looked the same. Yeah. 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 No, um, I, yeah, I, so yeah I definitely think 
with that stuff, when it comes to that stuff, I think painting preference will probably come into it. Because again, I'm only gaming casually, so okay. Not well, really too much. Yeah, I mean, like, the first things first. I think like for for approaching it once you made those options and things, like to move it on to the next bit. Like I think you know what I'm going to say when it comes to this. Like for the painting, like you've got to plan it. You've got to plan it because for, for just because in that way you can make all the important decisions. I know there's got to be the fun part of it where you're making choices for things. And like, I do recommend that you kind of get a lot of the skeletal decisions in place and then you can kind of do those other things that are a bit more nuanced or artistic on the, on the wing, if that makes sense. I'm but, a massive advocate for the test model. And I know people see test models as kind of like a procrastination project, but if I hadn't have done the test model for my Blood Angels, I would not have made three or four pretty significant changes that I would have really that it really would have irked me like down the road and I would have ended up wanting to change it I would have ended up having to go back and repaint a lot of stuff yeah yeah um, I definitely will be doing a test model yeah I yeah. I'm a bit 50-50 on it like I, I understand the reason why people do it I think that if you make a lot of those choices beforehand by writing them down you at least have some kind of framework for when you approach it so you don't really need to do a, sometimes you just get it wrong though like mine was planned I, but I, was I didn't say, like the result. I was going to yeah, say, I'll talk, I'm talking about doing what you're saying, what James is saying, but then doing a test model with that. Yeah. Right, okay. So yeah, that yeah. I can then make changes to that if I need to. I planned my recipe out and I thought I had everything dialed in. I'd made all my color choices. I knew what paints I was going to use. I'd written like a rough yeah, yeah. recipe based on like painting those colors before. And then I painted it and I was like, oh, I don't like the leather. I don't like the black leather because it is too much against the, the black trim. Oh, I actually don't want to use that color as a research shade because the paint didn't behave nicely. And there was like three or four like pretty significant paint changes that I'd made that I wouldn't have done otherwise. I, I, yeah, I do understand that. And I, I, I have done them in the past with projects and things like that. But one thing I will say is that that focus on one individual model, sometimes when you do a unit or you do, uh, a, do like a bigger, bigger part of it as a force or something, it's only at that point when you see it on mass that certain changes and decisions that you make have more precedence. Like, say for example, that's true. Say for example, like as an example, just hypothetical, like you paint all of them a certain way, and then you go, oh, actually, you know what? I I want to know a way of designating which one's a sergeant. You know, so you'd choose a sergeant to have different helmet color or something like that. That's kind you of like an additive change. That's not it like is, a fundamental. But you're, not gonna, you're not going to make that decision, discover how the colors work in in mass on one test model. So that's like, true, but like that's something that you can just that's like an extra step you can add. Like yeah, with mine, true. it was like the recess shade paint. Like I didn't like how it looked once I'd started adding highlights. I wouldn't you're, have known that. George talking more about the basics of the color scheme, and I think you're saying don't be scared to make changes once you see all things all together. Yeah, because yeah. it's ultimately your your army painting, like your your painting a yeah. large body. It's of, a different of, thing. It's completely so, different. Similar, like, again, with, with, when we were talking to Peach, it is like a different mindset. Isn't yeah. It? Like, yeah. Like they're, they're, painting an army. Paint, painting is painting, but then but then when it comes to doing mass, it's different. It's like, just yeah. different things to think about. Yeah. That you're only going to think about once you get to that point are, of looking at his 60 models in front of you. Are you going to question that that recess shade when 60 models are down on the table? And they no, the reason I say that is because like it made the process slower. It made it more right, arduous. Okay. I didn't like the result of doing it. I'm glad I didn't like, I'm glad I wasn't already locked in. It's a good, good point though. Let's say the, the leather color, you said you didn't like the black pouches or something. Yep. But that is, yeah, you're looking at it on a single model. Mm. How is the, how are the pouches going to look when there's 30 of them? That's fair. Do you know what I mean? It yeah. might look yeah. a bit different. I don't think pouches is a good example, but yeah. do you get what I'm saying? I do like, get what you're saying. Like, um, more, it's more coming up with color schemes and stuff. I think that the that's going to help. With. Yeah. The difficulty is you can't really do both. Well, I guess you can do both, but you can't really make I changes I think what you fly. should do is do a test army. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my point I was trying to make is that like, as long as you're neat and, and thin with what the paint application, things like that, and even a recess shade to an extent. Oh, you can repaint it. Yeah. yeah like you could, I, I would get a plan, paint a unit and go, how does this look? Because in that way, when you look at it, you go, right, well, actually, maybe I do want the sergeant to be noted, so I'll paint the helmet a different color. Or maybe maybe that doesn't look great. It, it won't take you hours to, to repaint that one detail across the 10 or 5, even 5 or whatever, but it just gives you a broader visual of like what your army is actually going to look like. Like, yeah. you know, I've, I've, I've done it before and I'm quite happy to admit it. Like, I've painted a, a test model in the past. I've done it and I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm really happy with that. The moment I've painted five of them, I'm like, they don't actually, it doesn't look how I've, 
want how I thought or how I want it to look in maths mm. as an army. Yeah. You know, like it well, in terms uh, of like paint choices and stuff, I do quite like it though, especially if you're not like certain on what your recipe is going to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also it gives you like something to know what you're striving towards. Cause if you haven't planned that out and you're just sat there with your like say you're literally batching like 30 models, you kind of don't know what the end result's going to be. And you kind of you might get a bit you might find a bit of lack of motivation. You just can't kind of can't see where it's going and you're kind of making too many adaptive changes. And also you might end up like batch painting like that. Say I'd batch painted the black on like 30 models gone. Oh, actually I don't like it. I've already, I've already done it on 30 models and I didn't realize that I didn't like it until the very, very end. Black's a good one mm. <laughs> For Brown. Yeah. yeah. Great. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Joe, how are you thinking of, uh, of tackling the painting process? Yeah. So, well, I haven't even come up with a color scheme yet. So this is my issue that I've had. So obviously I've been thinking about it while um, painting my war band. So I've had a little while to think about it. I think the problem I'm coming up with, I know that I think I want it obviously to be easier to paint. There's plenty of color schemes that like I love that are like, do you know what I would, I would love to do a half and half, but I just can't, I know I can't. I I'm think- not even going to, I dabbled with this when I was. Like, I would up love to do a half and half. Yeah. I, 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 I think, think they you, look so cool. I think you do a Paul Norton, mate. I think you do a metallic scheme and use color to so accent. This, the pro, the problem is, I, I've thought. What's about that metallic. chapter called? We always forget what that chapter's called. That's why I call Iron, it Paul, Iron, 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 Iron Ravens. 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 Yeah, yeah. Better, than, um, better than Raven Guard, but yeah. Do you know what that that is probably my favorite metallic marine color scheme? Yeah. And I think it's because there's a lot of like normal color on it as well. There's mm. like, I think the shoulder pads might be blue or. Yeah, they are. And they have so. a lot of like, he has the blue stripes on like sergeants and captains and things. And I think that brings it in a little bit more. But I'm not overly keen on metallic um, marines and stuff. Do you mean just silver or do you mean like metallic in general? Because, because. Mostly I'm talking about silver, but I think, yeah, in general, potentially, or more more likely what I should say is like me painting it. Right, okay. I like don't think I would enjoy painting um, metallic. Well, paints. I'll refer you back to our painting faster and better episode where yeah. we spoke about metallic color schemes and yeah. how they're, we actually spoke about the Iron, Iron Ravens then as well, yeah. how it's a good way to get very, very impressive results for very, very minimal investment. Yeah. So I don't know. What's something going for them? It, that I could tie it into basically what I had, the idea that I had without getting too complicated with a color scheme. One thing I do like that not a lot of people seem to do, but I definitely would want to do is that um, I like the idea of like, say the secondary color. Mm-hmm. So say, say they were metallic and then they've, they've got blue as well in the, in the Iron Ravens. I like the idea of like the vehicles and things being the secondary color. So yeah, being yeah. like blue or it's being, like inverted. Yeah. so like for white scars, for example, it'd be like if all their vehicles were red. red. Yeah. Like I think that looks, that's cool. Really yeah. cool. Cause it, get, well, it gives so, you the opportunity to do the kind of like a half and half, but not. Yeah. It's yeah, like yeah. across the, it'll be half and half distributed across the fox. <laughs> um, yeah. So in my head, I was working with like, uh, like black and orange or something. And yeah, it'd yeah. be like maybe black armor, orange shoulder pads. And then, the vehicles and everything are orange, but I also don't want to do black because I think it's just gonna. I do think it looks a bit boring as an army. Like, yeah, I, it's it's annoying. Not if you got gold. Actually, not if you got gold trim though. Eh? Do, you know, <laughs> do you know what though? Do you know what the the thing is? Uh, well, yeah, I mean specifically on Marines, I think it's going to look boring as an army. Yeah. but that goes to with what you were saying earlier is that I could probably do a test model of uh, with black armor and orange pads and like everything and it looked great then i think if i saw them all together exactly yeah i don't think i would like that's a, why that's why i like recommend mostly black doing a armor unit. army that's, ex- you know what I mean? that's exactly why i recommend doing a unit and i know it's an investment or i've got to paint a unit. this is like your test army's joke it's like yeah well, I'll just do it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. But, so so what i'm getting at is my instinct when i'm coming up with these color schemes is often to go like plain and dark like Oh, black would be easy, or black would be cool, or um, or because it's neutral, it's like you can't mess it up. Do you know what I mean? You can't mess up the combinations and things. It's also just quick to build up other color on top of, like if you yeah. do metallic schemes in particular, and you, for example, on the extreme end, like say it was a metallic color scheme, but they had white shoulder pads, like have yeah. fun blocking in the white over the yeah. over the metallic. So, I think 
when I think of what I would want a Space Marine army to look like on mass, I do think I want to do like a bright color or like a like a I don't know, I don't know what color, but I do think I want them to be a bit brighter. Do you know what I mean? Which I think is naturally just making it a harder color scheme to paint. Like, I don't think that's necessarily true though. Compared to some of the options that we're coming up with, like I say, like if you're doing black, you're skipping out like a lot of recess shading and stuff yeah. that you wouldn't have to do. If you're doing metallic, it's a little bit easier for X, Y, Z reasons, stuff like that. So yeah, I'm not really sure. I am, I don't know where to pull like color schemes from, I think is what I'm getting at. I want it to be a custom color scheme, obviously. I don't want to be like um, doing a actual chapter or an actual like codex chapter i did actually again this is like black again but i i did um think of doing the i've always loved the nurgle thing of the the purge yeah the black armor with the orange legs and the orange arms uh the the uh, green legs green arms yeah um but it's just too much work isn't it too yeah. much work for an army i was gonna do like a loyal version of that yeah, so this is why I used to like the old tactical boxes, okay? And I said, because it used to make half and half schemes really easy. The problem with Primaris kits is they're not true multi part. And this is the thing that makes doing half and half schemes harder is that because, like, the torso is kind of joined to the, to the, to the legs by the front, like crotch plate separately. And, and stuff like that. Um, whereas with the old, like, tactical Marines, you could just put all the legs on the bases. Spray all of them one color, and all the torsos could be another. You could spray them. It made it made doing half and half schemes, or not directly down the middle, just like obviously. different different schemes. It to a certain it, extent, it made the, down the middle easier because the only thing you had to have done the line on was the torso. Yeah, you could spray all the limbs and everything, whatever color you wanted. True. Yeah, I mean, I still think you can do that with Primaris. Though you can still like that's one thing you can do is that the body can be a solid color and the arms and pads can be different. Yeah, so you can still you can pretty universally do that. It's the legs and torso yeah. are one bit. Yeah, but. After that, everything is yeah, yeah, everything is separate. So I'm um, yeah, I'm I'm on the fence at the minute. Like we get so many different color schemes coming through here as well, and it's so easy to like see one and be like, oh, that's cool, I'll do that yeah. actually. Yeah. And then, like next yeah. week, you get another one in. Yeah, yeah. So I think I want to go against what my like gut feeling gut feeling is. Like I I I would be drawn towards doing like darker or more urban looking or like like fully black armor or something like that. I know that's not going to look good as a full army. So, um, You'll yeah. figure it out. So yeah. I'll have to, uh, I mean, I'm open to suggestions from the listeners. If Put in the comments me. your favorite second founding chapter and a little bit of some why you think Joe should collect them. Yeah. And we yeah. can, uh, I think that will help. We can have another recipe. argument about it at some point uh, next week. Or something, or? Yeah. 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 We frequently hear from you with questions asking how you can paint like our team of world-class and award-winning artists. Teaching is something that all of the team here at Siege are very passionate about, and we want to share with you the methods and techniques that we use to paint every single day, all of the incredible miniatures and armies that you have seen from us. With the Siege Studios Patreon, you'll gain access to a growing catalogue of over 300 step-by-step -step tutorials covering a huge variety of colour schemes, miniatures, painting styles, and techniques from beginner-focused foundation tutorials to full character masterclasses. Each lesson comes in a beautifully designed and easy-to-follow PDF format with accompanying artist commentary with new tutorials added every single week. Your subscription also includes access to our private patron channels on Discord so that you can interact directly with our artists asking for questions or feedback. You'll also be supporting the podcast directly, helping us to bring you these episodes every single week. So if you want to take your painting to the next level and make the most of your very valuable hobby time, head over to patreon.com forward slash siege studios so i think in summary like you should just choose models that you really really like as you said and then i would personally get a plan in place of colors you like painting i think that's something to start off with like you know i know there's a reason why i paint red all the time it's because i love the color so like i think if you if you pick some colors that you actually like and go well i do like this color I, you know i think it'd be quite good but also balance that with um what's going to give you the the functionality to get it done to where you want it to as quickly as possible. I think that's the fine balance to have. Um, and yeah, you know, whether you do a test model or test unit or whatever, I think that at least having something established before a single brush touches a model is going to help you hugely. Well, I think this conversation has brought validity to the fact that there's a lot of ways to tackle like getting started and planning it. But I think the important thing is to have a plan in place that suits like you and what you're going to do, but have a plan. So James doesn't necessarily want to do like a test model in the same way that I would, but that works for me. So I'm going to do that. But the commonality is we both like 
thinking ahead of how this is going to Yeah, you both out. have your own version of what plan yeah. is yeah. for you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I suppose, yeah, that's all you can kind of suggest to people. Like, we say it all the time with different techniques and things, like, just because it works for me, it might not work for you, or same with you two on a lot of stuff. <laughs> same with you two on how you drill barrels or how you, what was the other one that was like, really you were arguing about there's the, the basing material basing where i material. like to glue them. james likes to glue them to the bases and i don't that that's the it. other big that one that was the other yeah. one yeah that was yeah. the other one yeah, yeah. I, I was just gonna throw in there as well and i know i've mentioned it we haven't mentioned it in quite some time but having a painting journal is something that i would definitely recommend you do because it means that you can make some informed choices from the things you've done previously which i think is quite good and you've got yeah. that library of paint to choose colors for various reasons as well at the back so we haven't spoken about the journal in a little while do you want to just like give the elevator pitch for uh for the new listeners who might have come on board? yeah so painting journal is is a way to document your projects so that you can come back to them in three six twelve eighteen twenty four months and know what colors you use the process that you've done and also like have pages or the back of it where you have a library of all your paints the way they finish the way they behave the way they dilute the way they you know the the just the, the the general nature. I always say this, but like paint paints in general, like people, they all have individual personalities, irrelevant of the manufacturer or range within a manufacturer. Like I know for a fact that like um, you know Caliban Green or you know or Dark Angel's Green finishes different to the way Mephiston Red does, and they're both base paints. On them, if that makes sense. So like understanding that like paints are like people with personalities, and they all are different. And that library of paint at the back is what will. Will allow you to just make informed choices because you've learned that. I mean, there's something psychological where if you write something down, it's proven that you remember it better, you know. So, like, that's why it's really helpful to have one of those. So, if you haven't got one, then yeah, good place to plan your project out as well. I guess before, uh, have you spoken about before, like, you because you have your paint library there with you? Yeah, if you go somewhere, if you're on a train or whatever, and you're like, oh, okay, I've got half an hour free while I'm sat on this train, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna start planning my army out and just looking at the swatches at the back and trying right. to yeah. come up with like. Even if it's not like the final um, recipe that you use, you've kind of got like an informed yeah. choice. Just yeah. knowing by looking at it, okay, well, this paint's brighter than this one. It's going to be the second highlight layer. Yeah. And yeah. so on. Yeah. Yeah. Not something I've got in place at the minute, but oh, maybe, maybe you might soon. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Question of the week time. Thank you everyone for submitting your questions for question of the week. If you have a question that you'd like us to answer on a future episode of the podcast, please leave it in the comments down below on YouTube, or you can fire us a DM on Instagram at Siege Studios, or you can leave us a message on the Siege Studios Discord. This week, uh, we have a question from UZZ7114, who says... You're once glitching a- out there. <laughs> <laughs> who says, uh, question about using the wet palette. I have an army painter one. I love using it, but when I put the lid on and leave it overnight and come back to paint the next day, all of my paint is super diluted and basically unusable. This seems to happen no matter how much water I put on the sponge. Do you have any tips or suggestions? This is uh, not limited to the army painter palette either. This is kind of this just, is just a wet. Palette. This is just a wet palette thing. Yeah, uh, that is very very common uh, for it um, because just number one, if you put the lid on, it traps and seals the environment, which yes, theoretically stops it from drying out. But the problem is the wet palette is constantly evaporating. So if the water has got nowhere to go because the lid is 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 on it, then it just it retains within that environment, and it does. I, I've had it before. It comes a little humidifier almost, exactly, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah especially if it's a hot, if you've got more, uh, more sort of like temperate weather and it's, it's hotter. Um, you'll find, I find in my, in my Tupperware setup that I'll come in and it's almost like, yeah, do you remember when we go into a festival in the heat of summer and like the, the, the roof would get all the moisture from oh, where, the yeah. tent. Yeah. yeah. Like if you knock the wall, it's like an inside. Yeah. Storm. When you're yeah. camping. Yeah. yeah. My wet palette is a bit like that. If it's been left, in, you know, which is why I did recommend the mini fridge. Not that everyone has got access. <laughs> well, to some paints fridge. as well, like, like do just separate. They so do, some yeah, of it of is, is yeah. find the line as well because some of it is the humid environment and some yeah. of it is if you leave a paint overnight, even in a bottle, it yeah. will separate. Yeah, metallics specifically exactly. on yeah. wet palettes. Because and, and the reason I know that is true is because if I'm doing a very very long paint session, say like eight twelve hours, after a couple of hours, the lid's not on because I'm still painting. You can literally watch your paint like slowly separate on yeah. the palette. Yeah. Um, yeah. My I'm gonna I'm gonna bail you out, Joe, with your April hobby hack because I've got a hobby hack that overlaps with this. Not really a hack, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to work it in anyway. True bailing me out would be to like not mention it. Yeah. But he's called me out in front yeah. of everyone. Brought attention yeah. to True paint perspective like, style. What, what a friend didn't even give you it to, for you know, to use. Yeah. You know, like, it's yeah. fine. I already know he doesn't have one. We'll get to that. <laughs> but uh, my my hobby hack for this is lid of your palette. Not, I, I don't know if this would work for the Tupperware. I suppose it would. doesn't even know if it'll work. For the, for the Tupperware. For the Tupperware. If you're 
with my palette, I will, it's got like that um, seal, like the, yeah. the water seal around the edge. Don't be, don't be using that. Either just rest your lid very, very lightly on the palette or leave it with just a little bit of a crack so that it's not like a perfectly sealed environment. And you'll find that come the next day, it will still be moist in there, but there's somewhere for this like evaporation to escape. Similar to like if you're like boiling water on a stove top like, and you put the lid on it, but you don't, you need, like, like, you yeah. don't like vent it. You yeah, need somewhere yeah. for it to escape. You'll find that some of your paints might dry out a little bit. It's going to just depend from paint to paint. But generally, I found that's a pretty foolproof way of avoiding this as a whole uh, with the caveat of paints that do separate and some might just happen to dry out a little bit. It's going to depend on like the weather and the climate in your house, but that's a pretty foolproof way of, of getting around it. Like a little, little crack in the end, like, you know, centimeter or so usually does the trick for me. Uh, yeah, hobby hacks. This is our closing <laughs> segment of the show where we share a little hobby hack with Look, you. I got stitched up with this because we, we all realized how, how we, we hadn't thought about with the, we were pre-recording stuff as well. Uh huh. So I got stitched up from the get-go with this. Just to rewind, uh, we did discuss this at the end of one of our previous episodes and we couldn't work out who would come up with the fact that you would have to do all of the ones in it April. You. No. <laughs> so you're doing it again now. <laughs> I, love the way, I love the way that I lit the fuse and stepped back and walked away. We and, rolled and back and the tape. <laughs> we rolled back the tape. We all, and we saw that James actually came up with that idea I, and you threw was, me under the bus for it. I have a, <laughs> I just I haven't it, seen I, the clip. I just you have seen the clip. No one showed me the clip. Disregard this. He's seen the clip. No one showed me the clip. I just thought it would be good for you to come up with them because you, you, you know, I thought you, I think when we were speaking about it, it kind of roundabout came about. I can't believe you're just lying. You have seen the clip. I put it in our Slack channel. I put it in the Slack channel. I didn't watch it. (laughs) I just thought from the conversation we're having at the time, it was a natural conversation they're having whereby something came up. I got stitched up. And and you, and I was like, well, why don't you come up with the hobby hacks for that that month then? And then you were like, yeah, "Yeah, okay. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. And then I was like, so you accepted it at your own free will. But we're like, and then at the end of the next one, I was like, oh, but this one's coming out in April. So we're pre-recording like all the April ones pretty much. I think he came up with one. I think that was the title. I think so. Do yeah. you know what as well? I um, in in that conversation, I, I believe I said that I'd never come up with one. Yeah. But that I was had. it. That was it. I, I, had, I, I said that, that, was, that you'd come up it. with one before. Yeah. yeah. It was the texture paint basic material thing, like using that to put thin down your texture paint. I'll do it again now. <laughs> you t- t- thin down your texture paint to put your base in sand on rather than using like PVA glue, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Great. So, so yeah. there you go. That, so the, the listeners have got a recycled hobby hack and one sort of new one that was sort of question of the week. But, so so yeah. why don't you do the ones in May? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think I will. Did it work a second time? No. I don't think he, wasn't I taking, he wasn't taking the bait change. No, yeah. but I did say to George earlier, like, I don't have one. Yeah. yeah, And I don't appreciate um, being pushed, like being, I don't like the structure of the hobby hack really. Like, oh, you have to do something. I'll just say for the record, you didn't say you didn't have one. You said, I'm going to quote here, telling you now. He's got, it, he's got the actual the actual phrase, the actual terminology. You said, telling you now, I don't have a final hack. I prefer to let my wisdom naturally find its way to the listener throughout the episode. I so mean, on that it's note. It's true. It's true. On that note, thank you everyone for listening to this week's episode of Paint Perspective. <laughs> if you want to support the show, please check out the links in the description for the wonderful Onyx painting lamp. You can also get a commission from us, all those good things that you've heard throughout the episode. Thank you everyone. We will catch you next week. 